Hi everyone, I hope you're well. My name is Dan and I'm from the Audacious Chester campus. And yeah, I'm going to be bringing you the um, devotion for today. And um, coincidentally, it's on prayer, which I felt really hot in my heart. So yeah, so some of these things may have been covered in the prayer series, which has been really good, but I kind of felt really hot in my heart to kind of share some of the things that God's been speaking to me on this really big topic. So I've kind of called this devotion um, Stop Waffling. I called it Stop Waffling because I feel like in my prayer life, I've been feeling really convicted and challenged by God that um, when I've been praying, I've not really been praying, if that makes sense. So I've kind of been waking up in the morning, thanking God, praying for a good day, that kind of thing, all good things to do. Then I'd kind of end it with, oh God, and I pray that it's sausage and mash for tea tonight, don't let it be casserole. Nothing wrong against casserole, but uh, sausage and mash is superior, so obviously I'm going to pray for it. And then I would and then I kind of read this in Matthew in my devotion. It says, um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. It says, And when you pray, do not keep babbling, babbling like the pagans, for they think they'll be heard for their many words. And I felt that kind of really in my heart. And I was like, Ah, oh, when I've been praying, I've not really been praying because I was getting down about things I've not seen breakthrough in. But then I had this moment where I was like, I've not even been praying for these things and I've been expecting breakthrough in them. I've not been giving it to God. I've not been asking him to help me in these things and yeah that was a really big thing for me as kind of my first point really is like when you pray pray give it to god you gotta be intentional in your prayers and the order i think in your prayer well sorry your structure in your prayer is really important i kind of found this out when i was younger uh we were at like a christian retreat conference well my parents were i was there because i was their child so i had to go they couldn't find a babysitter and anyway i had um stayed up um, I did one of those things where if you don't move and you and you hope your parents don't see you. It's one of those kind of things. So I'd managed to stay in their meeting and they were watching a video of uh, Louis Giglio it was and he was talking about prayer and the order of like kind of how you should approach prayer life with like praise first, thankfulness second, prayers for others and then appeals for yourself. So I think that is something that has really challenged me. It's always stuck with me, kind of having that um, real good structure because when you set the perspective and like kind of get off in the right foot with God with praise and thankfulness in your prayer it kind of puts you then in a possession position to pray for the things that are on your heart and things that you want to see breakthrough in so yeah my first point really is when you pray pray and that kind of really kind of ties into my second point I um, read this um, later on in Matthew it was chapter 21 verse 22 it says if you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer and that really hit um, really hit hard for me it was like because it's like if you believe so if you pray in faith you receive whatever you ask for and I was like, oh, so I'm going to stop praying faithful, faith-filled prayers because why not? Because it says, what if you believe, you'll receive what I'd be asked for in prayer. And I was like, oh, that's incredible because sometimes I think we can often neglect the fact that we serve and believe in a miracle God who can do anything. So why not push the boat out and start praying for some crazy prayers? And that's kind of what I've been doing. And um, I kind of like, if you want to pray for an 11th finger, because you want it to people to bump into you and go, why I've got 11th finger? And it's going to spark conversation and give you an opportunity to evangelize and talk to God about people. Because it'll be like a miracle testimony. Like, oh, I prayed, got an 11th finger. Why not pray for it? Um, why not? I know it's a bit, of a bit of a funny example, but why not? We serve a miracle God who can literally do all things. And one thing that I've really been challenged in is praying for these miracle prayers. And I've kind of been incorporating it in my day-to-day -day prayer life. Like right at the end, I just pray for a miracle. So, for example... Um, I do college, so when I'm driving from where I live in Winsford to Manchester, uh, just before I set off, well, I, just after I've set off, I stare at the fuel gauge and I'm like, in Jesus' name, when I get to Manchester, that line's going to be exactly the same and no fuel will be used. Because why not? We serve a miracle God and that's like a really big thing for me with the petrol prices at the moment. Why not keep pray these crazy prayers? So, yeah, that's it from me today, guys. I hope you've taken something from that and I've encouraged you. So, yeah, just kind of when you pray 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 some crazy prayers and believe in faith and i believe god's got amazing things for you so that's all for me um i hope you guys are all well and take care